automation through information technologies traces back to the late 1940s. Take the IBM 604 for example. Well, despite the fact it was massive by today's standards, it helped automate business operations like payrolls and accounting. What's interesting is that these machines marked a turning point in how people worked. That computer wasn't just crunching numbers, it was reshaping entire careers. Think about it. Workers went from manually processing records with a pencil and paper to feeding punch cards to these machines. And managers, well, instead of watching employees processing numbers manually, they began overseeing computer operators and checking the results that came out from these new computers. These machines even created entirely new jobs, like blackboard programmers. Those are the people who set up the machine to execute specific tasks. These jobs never existed before and they were in high demand at that time. Overall, some adapted as they learned new skills and advanced their careers. Others struggled with the transition and many jobs simply disappeared. And the funnel and technologies repeated the same pattern. They needed new skills, created new jobs, and made others obsolete. But what's happening right now with generative AI? Well, it's like that IBM 604 moment, but on steroids. We're not just talking about learning new tools anymore. We're seeing entire professions transform in real time, and the nature of work is being reinvented right before our eyes. Writers are becoming AI prompt engineers, designers are learning to collaborate with AI tools, and programmers are shifting from writing code to training AI systems that write code. And just when we thought we'd see it all, here comes agentic AI. This is the next generation of AI systems that can act on their own and learn from experience. Picture AI workers that can handle complex tasks with great autonomy, or managers leading teams where humans and AI collaborate daily. But here's the real question. What happens to jobs and skills when AI can suddenly do things we thought only human can do? Are we facing the biggest transformation in workplace skills since, well, ever? Stay tuned because today we're looking into that. I'm Hamid Nash and welcome to a new episode of Ecom Pass. The journey of digital skills is quite a story, and it starts way back in the late 40s and early 50s. Think of it as the first wave of digital transformation. Companies that adopted the first generation of computers, either those that use punch cards like the IBM 650, or magnetic tapes like the Univac 1, needed people who could operate these machines. But more importantly, they needed people who could think in a completely new way. It wasn't enough to be good with numbers anymore. You had to understand how to translate business problems into something that those computers could process. The 60s and 70s brought the era of mainframe computers. Those machines required new skills like programming Fortran and COBOL. So within a few years, punch card operators became software developers. Those became essential for business operations. In that same time, data processor became a profession. Those roles needed skills in data entry and basic computer operations to process the increasing volume of digital records. But here's the thing. These roles were still siloed back then. You either worked with the computers or you didn't. There wasn't much middle ground. So the 80s changed everything with personal computers. The IBM PC in 1981 and Macintosh in 1984 started showing up on office desks. Everyone was becoming a computer user. Digital skills weren't just for specialists anymore. Now everyone needed them. New tools like Lotus 123 and later Microsoft Office changed how we handle data and information. Jobs that once needed whole departments could now be done by anyone with a spreadsheet. A whole new world of computer opened up and with it came new must-have skills for the workplace. The 90s brought another massive shift with the rise of the internet. Now, it wasn't just about using a computer, it was about connecting to a global network. Email became a critical business tool and new jobs titles emerged, like webmasters managed company websites, network administrator kept systems connected, and database managers handle growing amounts of digital information. Being good at computers, which we can formally call digital literacy, wasn't just for tech specialists anymore. Now everyone needed those skills, no matter what field they worked in. The workplace had become digital and connected. The early 2000s saw the rise of what we might call the digital collaboration skills. 
Digital skills evolved from individual computer use to effective team coordination. Tools like SharePoint for sharing documents and early virtual meeting platforms changed how teams worked together. People had to learn new ways to communicate or work on projects online. The mid-2000 transformed the workplace digital skills yet again. Social media and online shopping changed how businesses connected with people. For example, new roles emerged like community managers who run companies' social media accounts. And as more companies started selling online, teams had to learn how to run digital stores and connect with customers through screens. The workplace wasn't just about managing information anymore. It was about building relationships online. The 2010 brought the mobile revolution and cloud computing. Now, work could happen anywhere, on phones, on tablets, or laptops and teams across different cities and countries could collaborate on projects in real time. Quick mobile updates replaced long meetings. And all that data collected? Well, it helped businesses understand their customers better and make smarter decisions. We could say that Workplace had truly gone mobile. And with that, work became faster and more flexible. But keeping up with the digital workplace became more challenging. In that same time, being good at just one digital tool wasn't enough. The most valuable employees were those that could connect different platforms to solve complex problems. Take marketing managers, for example. They needed to master analytics, automation tools, CRM systems, and digital advertising, all while keeping up with the constant changes. Then came 2020 and the pandemic, which acted like a massive accelerator. Remote work tools weren't just nice to have anymore they became essential. People had to quickly learn how to manage virtual teams, facilitate online meetings, and maintain productivity in a digital-first environment. This wasn't just about learning new tools, it was about developing entirely new ways of working. And now, we are in the middle of what might be the biggest transformation yet, the AI era. But this is not just another tool to learn. It's fundamentally changing how we think about skills and work itself. Let me give you an example. Think about a graphic designer today. Just a few years ago, they needed to master tools like Photoshop and Illustrator. Sure, they still do. But now, they also need to write effective AI prompts, blend AI-generated content with their own creativity, and adapt their entire workflow to work with AI tools. And it's not just graphic designers. This shift is happening virtually everywhere. Whether you're a marketeer, a developer, an engineer, a project manager, or a teacher. Understanding how to effectively work with AI through prompting has become an essential skill in today's workplace. But here's what makes this moment different from all the previous transitions. The pace of change. In the past, you might learn a new software package every few years. Now, tools and platforms are evolving monthly, sometimes even weekly. The skills you learn today might need to be updated in just a few months. For example, just when we were getting used to conversational AI like ChatGPT, Claude, or DeepSeek, here comes agentic AI. These are systems that can operate and adapt with increasing autonomy. We're seeing examples already from AR marketing agents that can develop and execute entire campaigns to AI-powered customer service systems that can understand context and personalize responses in real time to virtual assistants that autonomously organize meetings, track project deadlines, and coordinate team tasks. With agentic AI, we are moving past the idea of AI as just a tool and toward AI as a collaborator, or even, in some cases, a co-worker. Imagine AI workers handling complex tasks without human intervention, or managers leading teams where humans and AI both contribute, all while working on their own. This shift means a change in the way we relate to technology at work. Instead of simply controlling machines, we will be working with them. The World Economic Forum report projects that by 2030, there will be a decline in work performed solely by humans. We should expect tasks to be split more evenly between humans alone, tech alone, and human-machine collaboration. And this relationship between humans and machines isn't about automation. It's about augmentation. Augmentation means machine enhancing human capabilities. It's like having a powerful partner that helps people work smarter, think bigger, and solve problems in ways not possible before. So clearly we should be preparing for the augmentations of human skills through digital technologies, particularly AI. 
Well, this brings us to how do we prepare for a future where the only constant is change? Well, I believe that the answer lies in understanding three key principles that have emerged from the historical journey. First, we need to recognize that digital skills aren't just technical anymore. They are a fundamental part of how we think and work. Just as reading and writing are basic literacy, digital literacy is now essential for participating in the modern workforce. The next generation of workers needs to be data literate too. They need to read, work with, and communicate data as naturally as they do with text. So not only digital literacy matters, but data literacy does too. Thanks to advances in generative AI, this transition to data literacy has become more accessible than ever before. Second, the most valuable skills isn't knowing specific tools. It's knowing how to learn new tools quickly. This meta skill of rapid learning is about being able to learn and learn and relearn as technology changes. And in a world where even AI keeps evolving rapidly, being able to adapt quickly has become key to staying ahead. Third, we need to understand that the future isn't about humans versus machines. It's about humans and machines working together. The most successful professionals will be those who can effectively combine human creativity and judgment with AI capabilities. And here's a point to remember. People don't get replaced by AI. They get replaced by those who know how to use AI. And companies don't fail because of AI. They fail because of competitors who know how to use AI. So looking ahead, what does this mean for organizations and individuals? Well, we need to fundamentally rethink how we approach skill development. The traditional model of learn once and use forever is dead. Instead, we need to embrace continuous learning as a core part of our professional identities. While some organizations are creating internal AI labs or adopting micro-learning approaches, Many professionals aren't waiting. They are taking the initiative as they teach themselves and stay ahead through self-directed learning. This proactive approach to learning is becoming as valuable as the skills themselves. So at the end, we saw that the story of digital skills is really a story of constant evolution. From those early days of the IBM 604 to today's world of generative and agentic AI, each wave of technology has demanded new skills and new ways of working. But today's transformation is different. It's faster, more profound, and touches every aspect of work. The, the key to thriving in this new era isn't just about learning specific tools or technologies. It's about developing that fundamental ability to adapt, to learn continuously, and to work effectively with AI as a partner. Those who embrace this mindset, whether individuals or organizations, will be the ones who shape the future of work. So that makes it the end of this episode. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I'm Hamid Nash and see you in the next episode of Econ Pass.